Um, hi, everybody. Um, welcome. This is Wednesday night with Kenny and Glenn and myself and Cassidy in the background. Um, this is our second presentation. Um, and this is all to help us understand better and reinforce what we already know. Uh, I have to do the disclaimer that, uh, that you remember and promise that you understand that this is highly experimental and is not approved for therapy. Uh, you take full responsibility for building and running your system and you do so at your own risk. Just quietly say to yourself, I do, amen, and we're good to move on. Um, tonight, Kenny's gonna be talking about configuration settings. Um, so this is just a quick overview. And so off we go, Kenny, it's yours. Okay. So. Um Let's see, we'll also add that um, uh, this is not medical advice. Anything I say is um, my understanding of loop and what works for my daughter. If you make changes to you or your child's settings, um, that's on you. Good, okay. So this is part two. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cover what Joanne showed and if we have time, we'll get into carbs because we didn't talk about the carb chart where we left off last time. Otherwise, we'll save that for the next one. So. Um, again, this is targeted toward people that are looping uh, already. Uh, if you're curious and haven't started looping yet, this will probably be a little bit over your head. Um, so let's like target the questions toward um, stuff that you've, you've been already been looping. So what we're going to try to do is give you an understanding of the rest of the settings that we don't normally talk about. We're not going to cover basal or carb ratios or sensitivity or anything like that until later but we'll just breeze through the delivery limits, correction range, suspend threshold, those kinds of things. Um, we're gonna talk about the insulin models a little bit, how overrides work, a little bit of when to use them, but we'll cover that more, only reinforce um, setting basils. It'll help your, help you understand when to use those. And a basic understanding of the carb absorption or ice screen as we'll get to if we have time. See, so configuration settings. In loops, you guys can take your loop app open. Oops, sorry. You can open up loop and go hit the little gear in the bottom right. And you can see a bunch of settings. The first one is correction range. Uh, if you guys want to see something, I'll try to show Tesla's phone. I have it here. Um, so correction range is basically where loop wants you to land after the insulin expires. Remember, loop's trying to get you to this range without the need to turn the basal off to like slow you down. Um, so that is represented by the blue bar that we covered last time on the top glucose graph. You can visually see where your correction range is currently set um, on that graph. So this is where loop is landing you. So if you'd like to be 85 or 90 or 100, somewhere in there, that's probably where you should put your correction range. Um, if you, it's not what it is not, and it's good to know, is that it is not a um, range that it wants you to hang out in all day or most of your day or at all times. So uh, if you are predicted to go above the top of your correction range, Loop will let you do that as long as you're going to land in your correction range later. Keeping in mind that insulin expires between five and six hours, so whatever Loop's model is set to, that's what it's going to do. It's going to shoot for six hours from now or from the last um, bolus or a set of insulin given to land you in that range. Now, it's not to say that you can't stay in that range, but Loop is not trying to keep you in that range. Most people who start think, well, why isn't Loop trying to keep me in between the numbers I set? Uh, that's not its intention. Its intention is just safety and to land you there. There are other uh, open source pieces like OpenAPS, Android APS that try to use algorithms that will be a little more aggressive in getting you down to your correction range sooner. But Loop is not currently set up to do that. It's just simply modeling carbs, carb impact, and insulin impact and trying to get you to land safely. When you are not gonna land inside that range, uh, Loop will take action. So if you're gonna go above that range, so if you start rising faster than Loop should expect, it will give you more insulin to try to bring you back down into that range. If you're going to land under that range, Loop will likely cut basal back to try to get you back up into that range. Um, so that is helpful. So if you would prefer to be 100, but you say your correction range to 130 to 150, you're probably not going to get down to 100 very often. So hope that helps. Uh, yes. A question. Why? 
why does loop what? Well, if you set a target range, I would assume that's the target you want to be at. Why does it hmm. not? Why isn't it set that way? Well, part of it is because insulin lasts so long, right? So if you could, if insulin was like a Freza or something else where it was really quick, it would be easier to do that. Uh, but because insulin has such a long tail, it lasts so long, much longer than the food you absorb. Uh, that's actually really difficult to do. Even Control IQ, um, Control IQ with Tandem has a little bit of this where it has a target. It's looking at the end of the range, but it also looks at a 30 minute window. Um, to try to keep you within that range as well. So it has some tricks up its sleeve to do that. But for now, loop is fairly simplistic algorithm in terms of um, the way algorithms go. It's an accurate, I would consider loop an accurate representation of all the, a lot of the pieces happening, um, but it's not taking a lot of corrective action to, in the short term, get you back in the range. So just challenging to do. That's really the main reason why. Um, Range versus single number is always the question. Should we use one number, like 100, 100, or should we use a range of numbers, like 90 to 110 or something? Um, Loop Docs will tell you 10 to 30 points is a good place to start. The idea behind having a range is that as long as you're going to land somewhere in there, Loop's not going to try to take any action. So if, you, if your settings are a little bit off, um, you're still trying to fine tune them a little bit or just knowing that your like sensitivity may change day to day. Um, you might want to just let loop kind of not take as much action when, as soon as you start getting close to the range you want to be at, that's what that range allows for. The other thing is that with Omnipod, especially, but with any of the pumps, um, every time loop changes to join a new temp basal, it sort of restarts the counter for how fast it's going to deliver its next, um, little drip of insulin. So you have to get into like the math about how that runs, but essentially if it takes a long time to deliver just a little bit, every time it makes a new decision, it's, it's resetting that counter. So if all you needed was 0.1 or 0 0.05, it could take a couple of different cycles for loop to see that you have a need large enough to give you a basal rate that's high enough. that will give you that insulin quick. So uh, because loop doesn't want to pick a, a basal rate that will run um, longer than 30 minutes or shorter than that, it can't really. So if you only need 0.1, it's got to pick a rate it thinks is safe enough to get you that extra 0.1 over 30 minutes. But remember, it's changing its mind every five minutes. So if you have a larger range it's shooting for, it's less likely to change its mind if you're kind of in close proximity to your uh, target range. So a little less likely to kind of shuffle on off, on off with different Basal rate. So it might be a little confusing, and maybe I could draw a picture for that. I think Katie did a good job of that. Um, a range is also like if you just don't really care. Like I run my daughter usually about 85 to 100 is her range during the day. If she ends up kind of near the end of a meal, kind of hanging out in that 80 to 100, I don't really mind if it's either one, right? It's probably, it'll you'll usually find a correction range. You'll end up at the top of your range more often than the bottom of your range just because of the way the way loop does it once you're it's it kind of shoots for the top of your range and if you end up going lower then it doesn't really do anything as long as it's within that range so it's always shooting for like the top of your range after a meal um so you're most likely to end up on the top so for a relatively active six-year-old 100 is not so bad probably a little better than 85 if she's going to go sprinting around the backyard so um that's kind of what that correction range is for how does that differ from um, the pre-meal um, range? Oh, okay, yeah. So pre-meal, often you're supposed to set pre-meal to a lower correction range than your uh, maybe all day range. Um, and so what that does is you hit that, and then when you enter the carbs and then bolus for a meal, it sort of temporarily uses a lower target correction range to calculate how much insulin you need to not only handle the carbs you're entering, but also to get you down a little bit lower. So it's kind of like a little bit of a cheater, like, hey, Luke, shoot lower um, than where I'd normally like when you first enter the carbs. But after you do the carb entry and the bolus for that, um, the next time Luke makes a decision, uh, if, if pre-meal is off, because usually it turns off after you do that, um, it won't really, it won't shoot for it anymore. And typically pre-meal's intention is actually to get you down. It's like a pre-bolus to get you down a little bit lower than where you're targeting 
normally before a meal. As soon as you enter the carbs, it turns off. Some people like to enter carbs, turn on the pre-meal and bolus. That works too. But naturally, you're going to turn on pre-meal before a meal. As soon as you enter carbs, it turns off. So, Isn't the pre-meal on all the time? Pre-meal on? No. No, it, it, it expires like, at like 30 or 60, maybe 60 minutes, I think. I It'll believe it ex expires as soon as you have a bolus for yeah, a meal. As soon as you enter carbs, it will turn off. And as soon as yeah. you, or it'll time out at like 30 minutes or something. And then when does it come back on? Oh, the next time you tap it. So that's why sometimes if you're a little bit higher than you'd like, um, let's say your normal correction range is 100 to 120 um, and your pre-meal is like 75. Then if you're a little bit higher than you'd like to be and you want to come down a little bit sooner, you could tell Luke, hey, shoot for 75 instead of 120 for a while to see if it gets you down sooner than that. That's why a lot of people will run a pre-meal you know, on and off all day. It's kind of like a quick, just a gentle way of telling Luke to get you down a little bit faster. So if you normally run 85 to 95 as your target, you might do 75 to 85? Yeah, or 70 to 75 or something. It's, what you're touching on there is the reason why I don't use pre-meal. Someone just asked me that today. Um, is we set 85 to 100, and it's only about 10 points off from where I would set a pre-meal target. Um, and especially because Tessa is so sensitive, she has like a 200 or more ISF. And that pre-bolus that Luke would be giving is probably going to be an extra 0.1 and most of her meal boluses are like two units so it's really not a whole lot it doesn't do a whole lot in terms of a pre uh, a pre bolus necessarily but it can be used later to kind of shoot a little lower but again it's not a whole lot of insulin depending on your sensitivity oh by the way cassidy i think cassidy just looked it up and that preview times out at 60 minutes 60. if you don't enter a car yeah. And then she also said, if you are on AB, do you recommend a single number? Yeah, good question. So um, actually, yes, I think I might get to that later. But um, huh. a single number for auto bolus is what I put here. Higher rates, higher basal rates, people that aren't as sensitive or um, that have auto bolus um, would want to use or could use a, um, a single number a little easier because there's not as much of that modulating on and off basal rates all the time. I'll go back to here. Suspend threshold real quick uh, is basically if any part of the prediction, so that like dotted line you saw on the glucose graph, um, if it goes below that, so let's say you had a slow meal and you took too much insulin, it, you might have this dip in the middle that would drop underneath of it. So if you see any of that dotted line in your prediction, going below whatever you have suspend threshold set at, at that point, it's either, it's going to try to avoid recommending boluses that it thinks would put you under that number, or if you are under that number or the prediction shifts to then be under that number later, it will cut basal, so your basal will be turned off. Um, also, for auto bolus, it will not recommend any auto boluses or boluses of any kind if your current prediction uh, ends up below that number. So you can raise it, you know, at night or something if you want to, but um, it's basically meant as kind of a hard stop. Like let's not try to go under that at all is mostly what it's there for. Um, there's other ways to use it, but I mean, that's basically what that's for. So if you're not sure why loops cutting basal, for example, a lot of times it's because the prediction is ending up below suspend at some point, either in the middle or at the end. Uh, increasing basal between correction and, okay. So another thing to note is, um, oops. What loops intended to do is the correction range, let's say it's set at 100 and the suspend threshold is 70. If you have uh, between 70 and 100, you should see this loop running your scheduled basal rate if your prediction's there um, and if your current BG is there. But if you end up kind of, uh, it, you won't recommend a bolus in between there. At least it's not supposed to. So. Uh, if your trend, if your prediction is going to end up between that 70 and a 100, you shouldn't see any recommended boluses uh, and you won't see uh, auto boluses or increasing basal rates um, at all because it, it's wanting to get you up a little higher. But it, you should see typically um, either a scheduled basal or might be cutting a little bit to try to get you your, your target back up to 
the correction range. So um, you also may not have a bolus recommended because you're kind of in that spot between suspend and correction. Okay, delivery limits. Um, okay, delivery limits, because I can't show you the phone yet. It's working on something. Uh, max bolus. So this is basically the maximum size, the biggest bolus that you'll, that loop will recommend or let you give basically. So um, loop docs recommends a lot, make it the size of like maybe a really big meal. Um, and I added or any amount that kind of causes you to drop abnormally fast. So for my daughter, she has a limit. If she, if I'm bolusing four units, that's about the number that makes her blood sugar start tanking pretty much immediately and means we shouldn't really pre bolus anything she's eating. So a lot, and I know a lot of people have that sort of number. So um, if you don't know what are the number to pick and you've experienced that impact at some point when you've done a large bolus and it's just started working right away, um, that's a really good number, just like the highest number you might want your max bolus at. Um, again, this is a feature branch here I'm going to mention, so everything can change. But for those using automatic bolus branching, branch feature, uh, that's also your, the maximum automatic bolus it can give is, is whatever the percentage is, 40%. Um, it will never be larger than 40% of your maximum bolus, basically what that means. Um, yeah. So you have a cap of by default, 40% of the, any recommended bolus is the bolus it will give unless, um, that's bigger than 40% of the maximum bolus. So hopefully that makes a little sense, but again, everything that can change there, you're supposed to read that on, a, on that on your own. Maximum basal rate. Sorry, this isn't very graphic. I want to do this basal. So, uh, you guys see those that that HUD that center graphic that's the uh, the orange one where the bar goes up. Well, how high that can go up or the biggest basal rate it can run is going to be set by this maximum basal rate. Um, the most of the time, the reason why you'd want it fairly large is for things like um, loop not recommending any bullets because you're falling and going to go below suspend. So it waits for your BGs to start heading back up again before it might, might recommend a bolus. But if you forget, um, or it's your kid, right, and they're at school doing their thing and the school nurse just bolus for them or uh, didn't bolus at all because they didn't recommend it, you would want loop to be able to give enough insulin fast enough to cover those carbs at a decent rate. Keeping in mind that loop will set a temp basal that will give you the amount of insulin you need over 30 minutes is the fastest it can do that. So um, that's kind of a guide to for where you might want uh, max basal rate to uh, to be. So for example, if a normal meal is like two units and you want loop to be able to give a whole two units in 30 minutes, then you would need your basal plus uh, say two units divided by divided in half to fit into 30 minutes. So um, are we, so would that be four, I guess four units an hour or something. Um, plus your basal, that's a pretty big max basal for a kid, for example. But uh, you want, if you want Luke to be able to give all the insulin it's ever gonna want in 30 minutes, then you would need to increase the maximum basal rate. Um, other than that, like generally speaking, you don't need that. To start with, the good safe rule is to just leave it small. Uh, three to four times like your highest scheduled basal rate is what Loop Docs recommends. And I think it's a good place to start. Um, the other thing is though, if you increase your maximum basal rate pretty high, so Loop can do a lot more, what will happen is it will affect how much bolus is ever recommended. So Loop is going to recommend in a situation I was describing where you're going low first and then Loop will recommend insulin later after you start coming back up. Um, loop will not recommend a bolus if it thinks it can give you the insulin through a temp basal in the next half hour. So if you have a really big maximum basal rate, you might not see very many recommended boluses because it's like, it's all right, I got this. I'll give it to you in the next 30 minutes. Now, if you know better, you would probably say, no, I want it now because I'm coming up and I'd rather not go high. Then you might hit the bolus button and is the pending insulin because the pending is what loop thinks it's going to give over the next 30 minutes. So um, that's just the trade-off. If you do a bigger max basal rate, you're going to have fewer recommended boluses. Um, but it also means loop is, a, is allowed to do more, essentially. Um, max basal risk. So the risk of running a higher max basal 
The main one is if your settings are off, uh, like overly aggressive, for example, or your uh, basal is your normal scheduled basal is too high, which we'll cover next time why this happens. Uh, you may end up going low and go low faster than you would if you just kind of limited loop a little bit. So especially when you first start where you're seeing certain kind of ups and down patterns, I would not increase maximum basal. That would be dangerous. The other, the main risk though that I see once you have good settings is the risk of loop disconnecting um, and you end up not needing all of that maximum basal that it's giving and it gets stuck running for let's say 30 minutes. So it can make you go low quickly if you don't reconnect. Um, so like for kids, that's more, more the thing you'd be worried about or someone who walks away from the right of the link fairly often for whatever reason. Um, you may want to limit your maximum basal rate because of that potential risk. Uh, maximum basal is ideally no, ideally you'd have no limit. You'd have just stick and do whatever it wanted. If you were able to tell loop everything perfectly and your settings were excellent and loop should be able to give as much insulin as it thinks it needs at any given time. Um, obviously not practical. You should have some limit on it. Um, but essentially over time, what, what we did is every time the maximum basal was used, I'd go back and look at it and try to understand, did it make sense? What was the extra recommended bolus? If it had anything above and beyond, you can see that in Night Scout. And see, did all that insulin that it was recommending that it wasn't able to give, did it make sense? And if it doesn't, then figure out why. Did you mess something up or are your settings off? When you start seeing it using the highest basal rate, again, in Night Scout's the easiest, um, and it makes sense. You're like, oh yeah, I really wish it could have given more or it would have been safe to give more, you know, after the situation's over. Then um, what we did is we would increase it a little bit. And then next time I'd be looking back and see if there was any other instances where it ran really high and did it make sense? Okay, bump it up again. So while you can recommend to start at three to four times a scheduled basal, um, Tessa's at about 20... 20 or 25, 20, it's just 20 times or whatever it is. Her scheduled basal is 0.2 and her maximum basal, I think is like 3.4 units per hour. Um, so there you go. Is he frozen? Yeah, it sounds like he's frozen. Okay. Well, how about if I read the questions and you answer them, Joanne? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we do it the other way around? <laughs> oh, the uh, All right. I'm here now. You guys got me? Oh, okay. I'm Sorry, different. let me read. Let me, any way of pushing through the bowl is even though the prediction curve is going to go through the suspend threshold. Um, and then the question goes on, can he temp basal will typically adjust? Are you not necessarily going to um, oh, I gotta, now I got to move up. going below the threat suspend special uh, threshold is fake carbs. The only possibility to get a bowl is pushed. Or is there some other option except for changing settings, of course? Uh, well, it depends on the situation, right? So there's always the manual bolus button, and you can use that. So, um, yeah, uh, Teresa just answered that as well. You can change yeah. not given, but the loop will shut off basal. Yeah, I mean, the only problem with the manual button is loop isn't calculating it for you, so you have to calculate it yourself. Yeah. So, I mean, just a little insight into how we manage, man, I connect the share to work, um, is, is I'll do that occasionally. Like it, our settings are pretty good, so I'm not too worried about it, but like if we miss time, for example, no pre-bolus or minimal pre-bolus, um, then I'll often give maybe an hour or two worth of basil as a, as a bolus, knowing that loop's going to shut off and it'll, it'll shut off for about an hour or two. Um, to make up for that extra insulin, but it, it helps cut the spike sooner. I'd rather have it now and Luke's going to take it away now so that later it, it works out. So Luke and I try to work as a team. Like I, if I don't like the way the spike is happening from food, for example, then I give the bolus anyways, and I just let Luke turn it off and kind of smooth it out for me later. Um, and that's fine. I mean, there are some days when we're not carb counting right and not pre-bolusing enough. And so I'm constantly bolusing. And so loop runs a lot of time without basal on, but in the end it ends up working out and, and leveling out where it should. So, um, or I just end up entering carbs maybe into the future. That's another trick um, that I'll do. 
is we'll enter like the next snack or the next meal about when we think we're going to eat it anyways. And then, then it recommends a bolus. Um, and I just have to remember to go back and edit that particular entry. You know, if we choose, she chooses to eat something different, but you know, if you know, you're going to eat a couple of times a day, you could at least put a little sort of placeholder, like minimal level of carbs for like the next meal. And that will, um, let loop bolus a little bit and be a little more aggressive into keeping you, um, in range, just make sure you don't forget about that entry. Otherwise you're going to end up adding more carbs for that meal. And, and then you probably won't eat that much and you could end up low later. So. I think most of the questions are answered now, either they've been answered in chat or uh, people are answering each other. So. Uh, okay. So I'll do this and um, I'm really not sure why I can't share Tessa's phone. So that's sad. I may have to just join the meeting from it or something. Um, all right, so insulin models. This one will be, I'll talk through it, but it's not like super critical. I just want you guys to know it's there. So this is the one, I guess, hoping to show the phone, uh, where you have the the picture of the, the graph. You tap on the glucose graph, the one at the top, um, and you end up on this screen here. I can show you on the top. Um, there we go. You end up on this screen here. And so uh, you see the model, the, like the dotted lines here. So the top one is the Walsh curve, which is the top option. And the next dotted one there that's selected is the adult one, then child, then Fiasp. So this is what we're talking about. This is the insulin model. How long Loop expects uh, the insulin to be working and kind of at what rate it expects it to be working. Um, so let me take that away. All right. So first thing, don't use Walsh. It sucks. It's terrible. Don't use it. Um, don't you also don't use it just because it's the one that lets you change the insulin action time to from less to less than six hours. Not a good reason to use it. Even shrinking it down um, is still not going to give you great results. I've tried. Other people have tried. Don't do it. Um, use the recommended model to start. So if you want to pick, if you're an adult, use an adult. If you're a child, use the child one. If you're in between, if you're like a teenager, take your pick. Um, Fiasp is probably fine. Um, yeah, uh, yeah if you're no, doing, we're no um, one's we're not getting the uh, screen that you're showing. Oh, you want oh, I thought. Deck? Oh, okay. We're oh, still, yeah, we're at, uh, we're still we're still in configuration settings. Dang it! Okay, hold on, I gotta jump back in again. It's locked up. Not sure why. Uh, there's another question. Um, if you're using a mix of insulin, uh, like Fiasp and Humalog, which one should you use? Uh, the example was one third uh, Fiasp, one two thirds Humalog. Um, from well, what I understand, I most people are going with the Humalog if they have a mix, right? That's what I was doing when I did the mix. Yeah. yeah. 